Hi, hello, and welcome to Capricorn Venus Tarot. I'm Capricorn Venus. So today we're going to see what do people like about you? So we've got four piles. Each one is like a uh, scented item I've got. Um, so it looks like most of them except for this one are Bath and Body Works as well. So anyway, um, number one, pile number one is going to be Twisted Peppermint. Pile number two is Brazilian Crush. It's from that brand Soul de Janeiro. Um, this is the caramelized vanilla and macadamia um, scent. It's really good. This one um, for pile three is going to be strawberry pound cake. It's a glitter perfume, which is fun. Um, can't wear it to work because I'm a massage therapist, obviously. So it's like <laughs> not going to make everybody glittery. But um, then we've got pile number four, iced lemon pound cake. So go ahead and pick your pile and I'll see you in there. Perfect, so let's see. Pile number one. What do people like about pile number one? I think people like that how fresh you are. You're, you're like very quick. Um, mm -hmm. it keeps people on their toes. It keeps people f like feeling engaged. There's something about you that brings people back into reality, you know, and like not so in their heads. So, okay. 10 of swords and the devil. Got it. Yeah. I feel like you are really a person who doesn't take any bullshit and you, um, you just kind of, but it's in a very light way, like a very, very light way. Hmm. I think you subtly disapprove of things and people like this about you because it makes them feel, um, it makes them feel like you're going to check them. You're not going to like hold something against them. Like if, if you're annoyed by something, you're going to look kind of annoyed and it's going to be funny. Um, and then they can just kind of move on with it. Okay. What do people like about pound number one, five of cups and six of pentacles? It's people also like how you face disappointment by just being generous to people and um, even even if somebody disappoints you, like I said, like in conversation or they say something annoying and you didn't like it, you you might um, give them a withering look, but then you're still very friendly to them and like you kind of move on. Um, okay. Yeah, again, it's like I feel like this thing that people like about you, Pile One, is that you don't harbor resentment and you don't force other people to harbor resentment against you because you are able to let things go but you still address them that makes other people feel comfortable addressing things but then letting them go and going on and having their good time you know like if you create a dynamic that is not boundaryless but is also very loving and peaceful yeah i know i know someone like this um my boyfriend's dad is it's like no matter what happens or what scenario happens or whatever awkwardness you think happened in the conversation, he will never ever remember that shit, like never. And so it's it makes a very pleasant dynamic because he kind of razzes you, but you never, you never for a second think he's serious or that he would hold what he's saying against you in any way. Like, so it's a lot more of a playful energy, okay? It's like you can be playful because you know he's not going to hold it against you, whatever you say to him, and that, um, you know, whatever he says to you is just a lingering, passing thing, and you can take the advice or not, but he's not going to, like, hold it over your head for all eternity, you know, like, not even for a day, you know, in, in the case of this person I know, but I feel like with you too, it's like people can sense that you're not holding things against them, and you're not looking for them to mess up, and it creates... It, it makes them be able to engage with you more because they trust you. So, okay. The Emperor and the Star. Whoa, okay. Well, this is very strong. Interesting. Five of Swords and Page of Pentacles. Okay, wait. One sec. Yeah, I feel like you go about things in such a different way. Um, again, this is really reminding me of something that I really like about 
um, that guy because I feel like he, he just kind of goes with the flow in a way. Um, and there's no, there's no changing what he was going to do. I mean, you can talk to him and maybe he'll change his mind, but there, it's like, it's a very peaceful environment because he has everything handled and you don't, you don't need to be putting on airs or entertaining him. That's, that's the big thing. I feel like people like that. They don't feel like they need to be entertaining you for you guys to hang out or for you to, or for them to stay in your good graces. They feel like they can be themselves and you'll, barring something that you would just tell them, um, you guys are in good standing. So it's like, that's really a soothing thought. It is for me, you know? So anyway, hmm. Also, you always keep the conversation going. That's what I was thinking about in the very beginning. Like, you're very fresh. Because the star clarified by the eight of wands, it's like you're always on to the new, on to the next thing. You have a new obsession, a new interest that you're bringing to people. You're keeping people's minds active. Um, and then with the emperor and the page of pentacles, it's like you like to lead. You have good advice. But you're okay with taking it slow. Or you're okay with not taking the lead if someone else has something they want to do. Um, you don't mind giving up power. You don't, you don't need power. You are stability more than you are like, you know, forcing people. You're like a popular, um, popular leader, you know? And so you don't mind giving responsibilities to people who want them or yeah, something like that. Okay. You have very much a leadership energy because of course I think of a dad, um, you know, like, like he is and you know, he has a huge job that he's really in, um, you know, involved in and he he like takes care of so many people's lives um as well as the people in his family's life so you have that energy to you somehow like where you seem like somebody who could take care of things and it's reliable someone you could lean on um and people really like this about you and I really like this about you but one this is like a great thing like I do find even knowing just one person like you um totally changes people's outlook it just makes them kind of take a breath um and feel like they are worth something without entertaining the other person they're talking to, um, which is good. Because if you feel like you need to entertain the person you're talking to, sometimes it doesn't really, um, it doesn't help either of you, honestly. It's just like an anxious encounter and you don't really feel close to the person. So I feel like people do um, have the ability to get really close to you really quickly. That's another thing about you, Pal One, is like people feel very close to you right away because they can sense this reliability about you. And this freshness. So it's like, yeah, really cool. Okay, interesting. Like, you're reminding me of, like, an older um, cousin. I have a lot of older women cousins that I looked up to. And, like, you're reminding me of that, where you kind of can look to them and you guys will always have an interesting conversation because you're very interested by them. I think people like how interesting you are. <laughs> you know, like, they like that you have your own wants and dislikes and uh, hobbies, and they love hearing about your hobbies. Isn't that great, Pal One? They love hearing about your hobbies. Um, yeah, they they like that about you too. They like how many hobbies you have, and they like your interests. Um, hmm, okay, let's see what else. Yeah, I mean, Ten of Pentacles is like stability, is, is cookies every Wednesday, um, you know, beer on every Sunday, like kind of energy, you know, somebody that is there every single time that you're reaching out to them. Um, and that's a very important role to people. And it's a good thing for you to be doing, Pal One. People really like this about you. I think this is a hard trait to compliment. So you might not know how much people like this about you because it's like, sometimes it, it, if, if it's not, if you are not this person or these people's family or you're not this person's father or mother, then it kind of maybe can sound off when somebody compliments you for being so reliable, you know? It's kind of a vulnerable thing to compliment. So you might not get this as a compliment, but people really, really like it about you. Um, whereas you might get more of the compliments about your hobbies and about how interesting and cool you are and like you're the mood board, um, pa one. So you might have heard that one before, but maybe not this other People like that you always just bring like a sense of having memories together. And, um, you know, a full hangout is like you solidify a memory. And I've talked about this before. Like, um, I think a memory is just a moment when you're really present with someone else. And we tend to remember those moments. Um, and I feel like you are really good at creating that safe environment 
from which someone can choose to be present. That's so nice. Okay. Three of swords. Also, you're funny. You're so funny. And you have that withering comment. Again, like, there's something about that where you can, like, really roast somebody. <laughs> but it's funny because they know you're not, like, gonna, like I said, not you're not gonna hold it against them. So I feel like you get away with a lot more, Pow One. You can say that little jab. You can, you can razz somebody a little bit, even if they're very sensitive, because they know that at the end of the day, you really love them. And you don't, you would never hold it against them or, like, at their lowest moment bring something up and hurt them like uh, you have a really good read of the situation so you're allowed to be a little bit spicier um and so people really like that that's <laughs> so funny okay again with the page of pentacles like you don't mind coming to people where they're at you know and again this this does remind me of of that guy who is you know my boyfriend's dad um is like if you don't want to talk that day, he is completely fine with just sitting there in the truck, not saying anything, you know, but if you want to talk, he's always ready to talk and he will have that conversation with you. Or if you need something from him, he's always going to show up. But if you don't want to ask and you don't really want advice about this, like he's not going to push you like that. Um, and, and again, that is very comforting. That is like a safety to people. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, coming to people where they're at instead of pushing them to go further than they're willing to. Okay. Mm, five of swords again. So these both came up again. Let me like fully shuffle this a bit more. Okay, so you also use this razzing ability. People like how you use this razzing ability also to shut down the annoying person in the group. Um, this is something that is a role that a lot of people take in friendships and families and workplaces is like there's one person kind of in those environments that is very annoying and takes advantage of people's unwillingness to call them out in order to be even more annoying or take up more attention and to make people uncomfortable with no reprise but with you around there will be reprisals so I just feel like you um oh yeah forced quiet uh it's like yeah my brother was just talking about it, it was like for you, I feel like people like that you can make somebody be less annoying or, hmm, it's like you can shut people down. If, if they're going to say something ridiculous or they're going to say something hurtful, like you know how to turn around and like kind of give them that smack on the wrist. Like you're, you're really good about that. Um, hmm. So you also are just very funny and you're very smart. That's another thing people like about you. But it's, it's like they're not necessarily just thinking pow one is very funny and smart. That is what they like about you, but it's more they're thinking, I love how they shut down blank person, or I love how they made it so I didn't have to listen to this stupid story, or I love how they blank, blank, blank about specific scenarios. They they remember these specific scenarios, and that's what they're talking about. Okay. Again, it's like they love how you're your own person, how you're this like really cool, your own person, like um, who will take their alone time when necessary. I find that this is like a very um, inspiring thing for a lot of people is understanding that everybody needs their little quiet time or everybody needs a moment some, from time to time or you need to indulge those kind of breaks. You know, if you get really worn out at an event and you go out and take your smoke break, you know, hopefully you're smoking weed and not nicotine, but, um, <laughs> you know, they're really understanding of that. You're really understanding of that. And also, okay, they're, they're liking that you need a smoke break every once in a while. You love to have a drink at the end of the night or whatever it is for you. It doesn't have to be um, anything like substances or something, but it could be, you know, like I always like that character in a movie that needs a glass of wine after a long day. You kind of relate to that person and you feel like, you feel more like they're a character on screen for some reason. So maybe you need that chocolate cake at the end of the night. Um, and that's that's something you see in books all the time too, like Throne of Glass Aelin, she, you know, is like obsessed with chocolate cake. And I think it adds, it adds something to her character. It's like, oh, okay, I like her, you know, <laughs> like, um, so people like that about you. Okay. Or like, you're not, a, a, you're not, I think people also love that you love fancy jewelry and that you love fancy stuff and that you love, um, you know, something luxurious Maybe you have like a fuzzy, a really, really nice fuzzy blanket that you love. And people like this about you. They like that you like the finer things in life, that you like to treat yourself. You know, it's like giving um, that duo in Parks and Rec with the treat yourself and like getting mani-pedis and, you know, 
enjoying those luxuries of life, okay? Yeah, Queen of Pentacles, yeah, mm-hmm. But you never take it too far. It's like you, because again, a lot of what people like about you is this reliability. So the fact that you're able to enjoy luxurious things and go on trips and, you know, um, eat good food and um, buy the expensive wine or whatever, and you're reliable, it gives people that leeway to do it for themselves. Um, you know, a lot of the reasons people like things in us, of course, is because they, they want to develop those things in themselves, but that's okay. They still like it about you, even if it, at the end, everybody thinks about themselves. So don't, it's still a really great compliment to you, even if they like it because of some reason, you know? <laughs> I don't know why, maybe you were feeling like, oh, this is all about them. No, but no, it's about you. You evoke these feelings in people, Paul One. You're evoking this feeling in people. Um, so it's just a talent. Like your personality is very interesting to people and inspiring to people, okay? Nine of Pentacles. Yeah, it's like you're independent and you do things yourself and for yourself and you're very artistic um, with the way you like to live and people love that. People are very interested by you. They wanna be around you. They wanna be a part of your story and people like that. People like that with you, they feel more excited. Again, they feel present. Page of Cups. Mm hmm okay. See, again, it's like there's something about you being very snippy. <laughs> like you being very snippy with people. I feel like if somebody was rude to a waiter, you'd really snap on them. Or if, if so then you provide a safe environment by doing that because you're like rooting out any kind of annoying behavior um, or like something that could make somebody else feel bad. So you limit those kind of things that make people feel bad. So they really like this about you, that you're like a gardener type, you're, you pick up the trash, <laughs> you know? Um, you don't reward bad behavior. Nine of Wands. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, another thing people really like about you is that you will, um, you will like, basically build a relationship back up after an argument. Um, you know how to make amends. You know how to apologize. You know how to um, like build something, build trust back up, you know, after a fight or after whatever happened, you know, or, or even just awkwardness in a conversation. You know how to like soothe that over and make sure nobody feels uncomfortable and make sure that you just, you kind of improve people's moods by putting them at ease. And people really like this about you. So let's go ahead and pull some music videos to end off. I think you smell really good as well. People really like this about you. Okay. Yeah, you definitely root out the bad, <laughs> and people really like that. You quickly root out the bad. But, but with this, it's like you really make people feel at home and loved and cared for and taken care of and supported, like your family. Um, and you just keep keep trying until, until people feel comforted. It's like, so if something happens where there's an awkwardness, you will try to bring them in one way. And if that doesn't work, you'll try again. You don't give up on people. You keep trying to make them feel better. You keep trying to repair things. You keep trying to build them up, just like a parent would. It's just, I feel like you're like that in friendships too. And maybe your relationships, but you know, watch out with romantic relationships being too like this because um, you need somebody on your level. You don't want to be always parenting, but um, it, for friendships and for like family relationships, this can be a really positive thing and you guys can switch roles all the time, but I think it's great that you're good at this and you, you know how to give that snappy comment, but then forgive people if they want to do differently or, um, and, and I think it's more subtle than like something so intense like that. That's just like a scale of the kind of thing you're doing. I think you're doing it subtly in conversation too and soothing people's worries that you're mad at them. Like some people are always worried that you're mad at them and you know how to put them at ease. 
and be it's okay if you have that insecurity but I'm not going to you know like I'm gonna I'm always gonna like you if I don't like you or I didn't like something you did like I'll tell you um yeah like if I didn't like something you, I, you did I would tell you like that's what I'm getting here is you're you're totally willing to have a conflict so that makes people feel safe we've talked about this so many times um but I think you know, you, you need to project this onto your own situation in your own life because, you know, we see the same stories over and over in our lives. Um, and it's all about what we learn from it and what we choose to do. And I see you acting in such a way that makes people happy and puts people at ease. And you, you can have really strong relationships as a result. Um, you know, consistency and loyalty are great traits that you have. And so it's, it's, it is something people like about you and that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, and like, again, you can be a little funny. You can be a little quirky, you know, because people trust you. You can kind of make fun of people a little bit, like razz your family members or razz your friends or, um, you know, razz your partner a little because they trust that it's in jest, that it's funny and you're not actually being underhanded towards them. It's, you love them and you're just taking, you know, you guys are just joking around, that's all. Um, but then when you're not joking, you're serious, you know, like, so <coughs> I feel like people can tell when it's serious, you know, and when they, you know, something did go wrong, you know, somebody was in the wrong and you'll, you're not afraid to call that out and team up with people. And so again, this puts them at ease. They really like this about you. You are a protective force in some people's lives, even subtly, even in a workplace, even in like those little ways, you know, like this is a good practice for people to project stories onto their life because there's a lot to learn from stories you know we're storytelling kind of people so yeah party in the usa you make everyone feel at ease you have your own insecurities that you work with and you deal with and you need that drink at the end of the night you love to go dancing to soothe your anxiety something like that and people love that about you that you feel those things too but you overcome them and so they can overcome them too um but yeah that's what i've got for you pal one okay I'll leave these down below. And I will see you next time. Thank you. Okay. All right. Pile number two. What do people like about pile number two? I think you're like sickly sweet, pile two. You have just like a very much a... um. Oh, warmth to you. Being around you is like walking through a forest in autumn, you know, with the leaves falling. It's like very romantic to be near you and um, everything feels just warmer and like, like I'm in a memory, like I'm having a good time. Um, like everything's right in the world. I actually feel like this feeling in my chest, like, <sighs> hmm, oh, thank God, you know, like this is such a nice time. Um, you're like a warm bowl of soup, ball <laughs> too. Breathe. Oh my gosh, breathe. Slow down and contemplate the tea. Violets and ivy tangle around the ease. And you see how romantic that is? It's like, you are just so romantic. You, you, everything about you is romantic. And, and I'm not meaning romantic in the sense of like, um, you know, sex or something. I'm, I'm meaning romantic as in like the romantic period of art. You know, softer edges. Um, you know, breeze in the hair. Um, you know, golden honey hues. Like that sort of romantic. Um, yeah, you just put a, a glowy edge on things. And you seem magical in the way you move. And um, again, it's just sweetness. It's like, it's like um, being around you is kind of like being in a memory where everything's a little bit warmer and better. And like, you just, you gloss over all the negatives and everything seems positive. So there's something about you. I feel like people like that. You just gloss over anything bad and you are just enjoying yourself. You're like very much a butterfly kind of energy, very light and we go from what I like to what I like to what I like, and we fly over everything else. Hidden depths. You only see the surface, look beyond. Yes, so I think, yes, people really like this about you, that you see the good and even crazy situations. Um, you see the, you know, the positive light, and you see the little gleam in the eye, and you have that to you, and you have a lot of hidden depths. You may be light and airy, but you're also very deep. You're looking at things through a spiritual lens or through like a larger than life lens where, you know, everything kind of matters. And so you really take 
it's like, it's funny because you take things seriously and people like that too. You're very dramatic in that way. Again, romantic, dramatic, um, creating romance in your life, creating positive memories. Twilight, surrender to the last hour. Um, when the light barely touches the flowers, you see what I mean? Like there's something very, very romantic about you, like aesthetic too. I feel like you have an amazing aesthetic pal too. Um, for sure. Yeah. Radiance. Keep your head held high and follow the sun. Is that not exactly what we've been talking about? Like, hello? Okay. What do people like about pile number two? Resolution. Hmm. Discernment. Interesting. And again, these are like sunset colors. You make people look at things in a very like, um, a, like, I don't know, you like kind of center people. You, you show people what's important because you love to look at a sunset. You love to look at the moon. You're very interested in, um, I don't know, like relationships or birthdays or, or like holidays. Maybe you really know how to celebrate a holiday. And people really love this about you because you make things important. You add value to things because you find value in them. I think that's a huge thing that people like about you. You have discernment and you chose them, that's first of all. First of all, I feel like something people like about you is that you notice their details and you like them and you, um, you're you interested by them. You find them to be romantic or interesting or have these traits that you admire or traits that you find to be like a book character and so they can see that in themselves too. Um, and people love this about you. And they can romanticize you so then they respect that you're romanticizing them. It's like you are, you are an artwork pal too and everyone can see that and um I think you smell really amazing you look r radiant um you know you exist in a very beautiful way a dreamy way and then you like them and you find them interesting maybe you find that you're you're pointing out that they're mysterious you're pointing out that they're funny you know and you're interacting with them as if they are as cool as you <laughs> and I know that's funny but like because you probably don't see it that way you probably really do think they're cool and you're seeing all these good things about them but I feel like they love that you see that in them. And so it allows them to see that in themselves too, because again, they respect you. So I think we got there. Self-sufficiency, yes. You are whole, you know, like you are whole within yourself and you like yourself and you're interested by yourself and you encourage other people to be interested in themselves too. You really um, empower the people in your life and they love this. They feel very loved by you. You are a good friend to them, yep. They love you. You are a good friend to them and they love you. You know, what do they like about you, pal too? You're a good friend to them and they love you. So that's nice. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, I feel like you're kind of like dorky too, pal too, which people love. Um, they like that there's like a, like a cheesiness to you, you know? And again, this allows people to access that cheesy part of themselves. You've, you've opened up that because you are like that and you, um, don't mind saying the cheesy thing or taking the cheesy photo or something like that. Um, cringe is dead. So <laughs> get rid of cringe, embrace life. <laughs> and you live by that. You live by that. Um, <laughs> I think my boyfriend just laughed back there. Okay, so you, you also judge people who are overly serious or like the hipster types. And I think people like this about you. They You make people feel less self-serious. Like, okay, you know, maybe I'm being a little ridiculous. Um, and you make people take things not so hard. Oh my gosh, yeah, you really soothe people. Uh, yeah, Ten of Swords and Judgment. Yeah, you really soothe people because you're like, let's just move on. Who cares? Fuck them. You know, this is your life. You're the main character. Like, you really have that kind of hype up vibe. Oh, I love you. Okay, let's see. Four of Cups. And yet you decline anything you don't like, you know? So you have this like sweetness, um, you know, reciprocity to other people. But if somebody is like rude to you, you're not going to be sweet to them. You know, you still have that sense of discernment. Again, it's like discernment. So then when you do approve of something, it means a lot more. Again, they can trust your opinion that they're good because you will turn away from anything you don't think is cool or you don't find good. So people trust you more. You're more like a critic. I think people really like how you are like an art critique or you're an artist yourself. Um, 
or you definitely have an artist's eye or an aesthetic vision. And, and people like that because if you're discerning, then your opinion matters more and you like them. Something about that, okay? Yeah, you're really a soother too. You, you know how to like make everything seem sweet. You're definitely a spoonful of sugar and you're making the medicine go down, pal too. I'm really feeling that from you. Yeah, you make people feel like their hurts aren't so bad. You're always putting your emotions forward and bringing your emotional um, kindness to people. And so their they're three of swords turns upside down. It's like, it's not so bad. Everything that felt so serious and like it was trapping them, it doesn't feel so serious and like it's trapping them anymore. Um, you make people look at the sunsets. You make people think of <sighs> brighter things. You make people enjoy the little things in life. Um... And they love that about you. And, and not only do you make people do that, it's it's because you're doing it. Because you see the beauty in a sunset, they do. And they do because you're trustworthy. You know what you're talking about. You're smart. You're pretty. You like people. You know what you're, you're doing. Like, you have an opinion. And so you like those little things that I have access to. So I should like them as well. Uh, that's what I'm seeing in this. So, okay. Yeah, you're always like, tomorrow's a new day. There's always an opportunity to enjoy yourself, to, you know, pick a flower or to um, look at a campfire. Like, you know how to enjoy those things that all human beings, mostly, you know, for the most part, and except in a bad situation, um, have access to and can go get for themselves. So you romanticize porch swings, you know what I mean? Like, um, I think another thing is like, yeah, you're kind of sneaky that way. It's it's not a, a naivete. It's like you are just romanticizing it on purpose. You're you're soothing those edges on purpose. Um, you're making things more beautiful on purpose, like an interior designer does. You know, that's what my mom does. Like, I just feel like, yeah, you're making things better on purpose. And people like this about you. It's not an accident. You want things to be more beautiful. So then they don't see, feel so foolish doing it too. Like you show that romanticization and being an artist is a skill. It's not something you're born with. It's something you develop. And they can do that too. They can have a more artistic life. They can, um, you know, wear the clothes they like because you had to learn to wear those clothes. You had to learn to um, see what you like and whatever. So they're allowed to learn that too. So of course, whatever people like, about you is also something they want to develop in themselves, but that doesn't mean they don't actually see it in you, by the way, pal, too. It is still about you. It's something you're doing here that you're you're making. And I, I said the same thing in pile one, but what else do people like about you? They don't always know your thought process. Again, there's like a sneakiness a little bit, um, a sly kind of, you know, because you're discerning, and again, you're choosing what to look at, you do see the negatives. It's just that you're purposefully ignoring them or you're only focusing on what you like. And so people don't always know your mind, but they know they can trust you and that you've come to this conclusion honestly. Like you came by it honestly. Um, and there's reasons even if they don't know them. So people like that. They always can trust your reasoning even if they don't get to know everything. Everything you thought or anything. Okay. <sighs> And you balance all that so well. Like, you're romantic and friendly, and you want that for everyone. Yeah, and, and, the, and in this way, you're, you're a leader. Okay, anything else for pile number two? Yeah, okay. So I think that sometimes people are so sad, and but they don't want to confront it. They don't want to think about the fact that they're sad, but it's still lingering there. And there's something about you that soothes that sad part of them without even having to talk about it. Um, just by looking at the sunset, somebody can come to a conclusion about their parent. And that's just how life goes sometimes, you know, it'd be like that. Um, <laughs> like you watch a movie and you cry and you think about your own problems and you don't really have to necessarily talk them out with someone. Like you can just come to good conclusions. Um, on your own time through the beauty of the world and through enjoying yourself and and making memories that plaster over those sad ones for you once you've really looked those sad memories in the eye and there's something about that with you like you I don't know you you soothe people through showing them how to enjoy life and not always in the back of their mind be thinking about that sad thing that happened okay yeah you're a good influence on people and you allow people space um, you allow people space, you give people opportunities to enjoy themselves. A good bonfire is always awesome. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Let's end off with some music videos.
So. else people like about polymer too everything shooting star okay god's country is the last one okay. all right that's it too many too many <laughs> oh well okay we're gonna put these in categories a little bit. category break my heart myself I feel like people like that you have your own journey you have your own mental process going on about you know working through things in your life by enjoying the little things and you have discernment but still enjoyment um, and so they can go on their own private mental journeys and people like that they're learning this from you um, they like that you have again it's like this idea that you've had to go on a journey in order to come to these conclusions where you went on a lot of road trips with your friends and you know worked throughout you know worked through all these problems or something then people also really like about you that you make them feel alive you make them really engage with the real world again bonfires sunsets the ocean swimming you know these are things that make us feel alive because it makes us feel human so you are really good at that. And then you're also just like a great friend or partner or family member to just run around the town with and make unforgettable memories. Again, you're putting people into a state where they are looking at the world in a romantic lens just like you. And so they really like this romantic lens from which you see the world. Um, you know, and they feel like they can be with you forever, like have a ride or die close connection to you forever um, because you keep everything young. Even if you guys aged, you would still look at the world in a good way. Another thing people like about you is that you're kind of testing them a little bit. You do have that side eye of, um, you know, knowing when they're being negative, but choosing to embrace their positivity anyway. Um, and in giving them opportunities to please you, you know, like maybe they could point out a flower that you might like, or maybe they could, you know, there's something about that where, they want to please the artist by seeing the art, seeing the world in an artistic way. And it is a great way to please you. It, you will engage with that sort of thing. And people love that about you. If they point to something that they thought you would think was cool, you probably will think it's cool and engage with them on it. So again, it's like positive, a positive loop. Yeah, and your aesthetic is amazing. And they love that you engage with that for sure. You're very deep. You're very exciting. So again, we trust you. We trust you because you seem like the artistic type. So you probably know if I'm being artistic <laughs> or creative. I don't think it's necessarily artistic. It's just like creative is what I'm thinking. Like you are so creative. So when you say, oh, that's really creative to somebody, um, they really believe you or, oh, I really like that or whatever praise you're giving to other people. They believe it because of how you are and how you look and how you live in the world and what you like. They trust you. They trust your eye. Um, okay. They also like that um, you, yeah, again, it's like you do have this sense of like whipping people into shape a little bit through telling them what you like and expecting them to do it. Yeah, and that you you have an idea about how things will go and, we're, it, you know, you want it to go that way. Um, and people like this about you, that you're trying to have the best time possible because, again, it, you know, it's exciting to see your vision come true. Like it really is. You have a great vision and people are excited to see it come through. Okay. Leave the door open. You always let people have a good time. People love hanging out with you. This is a lot of hangout time. So again, you're making memories 
Oh, there's a scene where they're um, sitting on the couch watching a movie and everybody jumps up and everybody's, oh, you know, like excited about the movie. Um, so, you know, you have, you bring that, you bring that awareness, excitement, interest, really engaging with what's going on right then in the present. Um, so that's what I've got for you, Paul, too. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to leave all of these down below <laughs> and I will see you next time. Try to leave them in the... Um, piles that they were like so you can see my little sections so I feel like those are all the things people like about you I mean watch more videos there of course there's even more things that people like about you this is just one part um you can watch the whole video even you know some people do that so I think that we're very you know deep people and it you know there's lots of sides to us you know and you can always choose to show a new side of yourself and then people will like something totally different maybe you'll come back to this video and you'll pick a different pile um but yeah i like you so see you next time okay miss diamond over here pile number three strawberry pound cake and you chose the glitter spray wow well i think people love that you just add a little bit of fun to every situation you yeah, you are just always going to leave your mark. You're not afraid of being big, being a big personality, taking up space, making it about you, being the star of the show, you know, making the jokes, getting up on stage for karaoke, um, you know, taking that cold plunge first. You don't mind being the first one to have to do it. It's like, you know, everyone needs that in a group, like somebody who's willing to do the first stupid thing. Somebody who suggests we all do shots, you know? <laughs> You're that person, Pile 3. You're the one who suggests the shots. So let's see. And people love this about you. Uh, of course we get Leo. Leo, Aries, Libra. Excuse me, Pile 3. This is like, yeah, this is very, very charming energy you've got here. Very, very, very charming. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah, you take the blunt force of every situation. I would say that people love this about you because you really take the center stage so other people can just kind of relax and, you know, live their lives a little bit. Um, you don't mind taking all the attention onto yourself. Um, and so people feel very protected by you because it doesn't have to be about them. It can be about you. You're not afraid of the attention. You're not afraid of the spotlight. Um, you know, okay. Yeah, you're, you're itching for the tower. You love when something exciting happens and you don't mind taking the reins. Um, and people love that about you. Yeah, you're very much a star. Dang, the emperor and the tower. And the emperor is, is Aries too. So again, you're very forward thinking, forward moving, action oriented, um, gonna start the plans, gonna get everybody together, not, not weary. I think there's something else that people like about you is like you're not really afraid of rejection. Um, and, you know, everybody is to a certain extent, but there's something about you that's kind of not. Like, you're not afraid of jumping in and making a mis or making an ass of yourself is what I just heard. Like, if, if you make that joke and it just falls flat, there's something about you that doesn't actually care. And people like this about you. They love that you just are like, okay, let, let it fly. You know, whatever happens, happens. Um... Yeah, and you take the role, you take the reins that way. You take the lead that way, and so people are people can follow. You know, if you suggest the shots, then they can take the shots, and um, you know they don't have to be the one to take the attention towards themselves by suggesting something like that. It's kind of a hard thing. You might not feel that way, pal. Three, you might enjoy the attention, enjoy the spotlight, but other people really like that you take the spotlight because they don't really want to have it. Um, and they feel uncomfortable by that sort of thing. So by you taking that spotlight, taking that attention, that means they get to have fun without being worried about any backlash. You know, they, they kind of get no consequences for engaging in your antics because they're your antics, you know? <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, there's some, something about that you suggesting the plans, you suggesting the late night walk to the gas station, you suggesting we play, you know, drunk poker or something like there's something about that where you are the one who really pushes that and you make it fun and you make it interesting. Um, and you, you kind of force the hand of the quiet people maybe, um, by like, yeah, you kind of force their hand, but in a nice way, I'm saying like nothing mean or pressury or something like that. It's like just by being not being afraid of being loud and inviting them, they don't have to be the ones to ask if they can come, you know? So you're really good about that. 
And people love this about you. People, people that are shy love this about you because they feel, in, you know, they feel included. They feel reached out to. They feel like you've taken the burden away from them of that, you know, hardship of taking the spotlight or put the, putting themselves out there. And then the people who aren't the shy ones, they like it too because, you know, like it's, it makes everything feel more fun. Like if you are including the, the shy people, maybe they don't know how to make that person feel at ease or they don't know what to do to engage that shy person. And you you take that. And so people really like this about you. They see this caring um, star player vibe from you. It's almost giving me like when the um, football player, the popular football player is like really nice to the quiet girl or whatever in the room and therefore turning the tides in her favor. So where people don't you know, necessarily bully her or, or anything. Like, yeah, there's something to that. Okay, well, you'll probably know what that's about. Okay, what do people like about... Yeah, but this is giving me, again, it's like you have this, like, popular status and you use it in a positive way. You, yeah, you really use your power to... You use your power to protect the underdog, Okay. And you use your charm to protect the underdog. You, you use your charm for a lot of positive things. I feel like that's what it is, pal three. People love that you use your charm for a good cause. Always, always. You're always doing something like that. And it doesn't, I, I, I'm getting the sense it doesn't even really come hard, come hard to you. Like it's not, it's really easy for you to just be charming and to engage people. Maybe you really like the quiet person. And again, maybe you like the attention. And so it's not really that big of a burden for you to be taking attention. Like you might just like it. And so it's a perfect dynamic because you like the attention and people like that you have the attention because you use it wisely and you use it to protect others. So it's like, a yeah, just again, a perfect dynamic. Hmm. Yeah, with well, this Knight of Cups, it's perfect for, for what we're talking about. It's like you are always willing to reach out a helping hand. You're going to kiss the baby. You're going to um, tell everyone to be nice. You're going to um, reach out if somebody's been super quiet. You're going to, um, yeah, you're always going to be that one to invite people, that one to make the plans and put yourself out there and put yourself on the line. And a lot of people struggle with that. So they love that you don't struggle with that. And you can kind of take that. And again, you seem to like it. You seem to enjoy yourself in the spotlight. And yeah, okay. So the biggest thing I'm getting with you, Pal 3, is people love that you enjoy the spotlight. They love making you the star of the show. So you should know that. Like maybe sometimes you feel like you take up too much space, but actually people are grateful that you're doing this. <laughs> you're really taking the heat off of them because um, not everyone loves attention as much as you do. Hit <laughs> the sun. Well, yeah, then the Hierophant. Wow, okay. You know, I mean, the sun and the Hierophant. So you are... Again, taking all the attention, all eyes towards you. Everything revolves around you. And you may feel like sometimes that's a bit much. But actually, everyone really likes this about you. That all the things revolve around you. That you draw in all of this energy. Because then, it, it again, it leaves them to themselves a little bit. Um, and they find you to be very intriguing. They want to give you this attention. They are, they are constantly looking towards you and wanting to give you attention. And so they like that you're actually... You're actually receptive to this attention that they want to give you. You want this attention. And so they want to give it to you. And it's a great, like, relationship that way. So you should know that. You know, don't be afraid that you're being annoying. Or don't be afraid that um, people are going to take your positivity the wrong way. Because, you know, if, if people do take your positivity the wrong way, that says more about them. You know, like, and, and sometimes people are insecure. And so they fear you're being fake or anything. But over time, they'll understand that you're not. And that you really are just like that and you like the attention. and they, it's You're a safe place to invest. And that's what people like about you. Again, I think the biggest thing, though, is that you like the attention. You have a lot of charm. You're good at it. You at attract a lot of attention. You like it. And you're beautiful and amazing and glittery and the sun. So great. Um, and you're the higher fan. So you also know what to do with that attention. Know what to do with that power. You know, with great power comes great responsibility and you're kicking it. You love it. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for being you. Anything else for pound number three? I mean, you're super beautiful as well. Like, or handsome or good looking or something. Like, you're, you are really good looking, pile three. Um, like, it's a huge part of it. Because with Leo, it's like, 
again, you're giving supermodel and, and like, don't, it's, it's not like this super dramatic thing. I'm not saying, you know, skinny, um, annoying specific outfits. I'm saying supermodel in the sense that everyone wants to look at you and you're really good looking and people feel like, for example, if you were to compliment someone in public, they would feel extremely flattered because of how good looking you are. And that's just something you should know is like your words hold much higher weight because people find you to be very attractive <laughs> and that's okay. Like you're a star. So of course it feels amazing to be complimented by a star. Um, pile three. Okay. Peace. Balance. Yeah, but again, it's like you don't let this go to your head in any way. So it's like you like the attention, but you don't make it so you're better than someone else just because you're getting all this attention. You still love the people in your life just as much as they love you. It's just that you don't mind taking the brunt of being the leader, being the face of things, um, you know, taking all the flack and um, being the one who puts their heart on the line to invite people to a dinner. You know, basically, you know your role and you embrace it and you go full out and you really you really enjoy yourself having that role. And that doesn't mean that the other people's roles are less important than yours. Um, you, you love their attention and you it's a, a very mutual reciprocal thing. Self-sufficiency. And, and so if someone doesn't wanna give you attention, if someone doesn't want to you know, look towards you or be about you, that's okay. You, you know, you have other people that can give you attention and you also just like yourself. You're giving yourself attention. Um, you find yourself exciting. Again, with, with getting number one, you like yourself and you love other people and you love this attention that people give you and you love being kind to people. So it's a perfect scenario for you to be a star of some kind. Compassion, yeah, you have a lot of compassion and for other people and you're very secure in yourself. And so this makes you not act out against others because you're not jealous of them or you're not insecure. You like yourself um, and people love this about you. They feel like you are the star and you deserve it. So that's great, pal three. Let's go ahead and pull some music videos. This was already at the top. Okay. a great one. course we get sense that God gave you. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. You're not afraid of standing out. You're not afraid of having fun and taking the wrath of some random, um, you know, rude person on the street because you were being too loud or too funny. Like, you don't care about that. You know you're great and you love hyping other people up as well. But you don't mind being the one that's the star. Hit different. Yeah, you don't mind being different. You don't, you don't care that you're an outsider. Um, because you're a popular outsider or something like that. Like you, you are different because you're taking up more space or you're because you're trying, you, you don't mind the attention. You have a star quality. Um, so you don't feel bad about yourself for being different. You like that you're different. Yeah. You like the attention. You are receptive to compliments. Um, this is, these are other things people like about you. You don't need anyone. You like the attention. It, it reminds me of this part of the music video where she's like, just the tip, you know, it's like, I'll, I'll take the compliment, but I don't want, you're not controlling me with that, you know, like uh, the compliments match how I'm feeling, which is great about myself. So this is a great one. More Kalani, so you're hot again. It's like, you're very hot. And this is for both genders, you know, like, there's just something sexy and fun about you. 
and also for non-binary people. But yeah, it's just like, yeah, you have a fun sexiness. <laughs> like you really do. And people love that about you. And so you want to compliment, you love the attention, but nobody's controlling you. You, you like yourself too. It's like, you haven't found something special, dude. Like I like the way I look too. Yeah, you're right. I'm so, I'm so good looking, you know, look how powerful I am. Okay, so that's what I've got for you, Pal 3. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time. And I'll leave these down below, by the way. Okay. Let's see. <coughs> All right. Hmm. You have a very light touch, pal for. Um, there's something very sweet and soothing about you. I feel calmer. I feel taken care of. I feel like I'm going to school with a full backpack full of my supplies. Um, and I'm completely ready, you know? And yeah, you just, you have a very like soothing vibe to you of peace and, you know, pleasure and like just enjoying life and having your breakfast calmly. Um, mm -hmm. you keep things very light in a nice way. It's like a humming, like a nice, beautiful, you know, chiming of the bells on a calm, you know, sun sunny morning. Mm hmm Okay. Anything else? It's so funny because it, this is focus, but with this, I'm, I'm getting like, you make people not focus like you you kind of make people just just be and just be present and not worry be like really at ease um and believe in a, a calmness believe in a peace truth focus and truth and it's like these calming blue colors you know i'm just feeling very soothed very very soothed like okay this is something i can trust this is someone i can trust um, I can put my guard down. People really like this about you. And they, they like it not just in terms of what it, you know, them being able to put their guard down. They like, they like you for that. You know, they like that you do that for yourself, that you are calm and that you're enjoying yourself and that, you know, no thoughts, head empty kind of thing, but in a positive way. Like, let me just not think about all that stuff. Let me just, you know, just be. Just be. We don't have to be achieving. We don't have to be doing anything. We're just having breakfast. You know? It's so beautiful. Yeah, you make people realize that, you know, not everything is subterfuge and spies and, and like, um, politicking and whatever like it the moon <laughs> yeah yeah you're 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 calm you're at peace you leave things that don't need to be uncovered covered you know like we don't we don't need to go over it again we don't need to um pick at this wound basically there's something that's there's something about that with you um you don't have the same fight over and over And you really just enjoy yourself, you know? And again, with this, I keep getting like the no, no thoughts head empty, um, which is actually a great thing to practice and helped me at on one point in my life. Like every time I would get sad, I would just be like, no thoughts head empty. Like <laughs> if I can't, if I can't think of something without being sad, then let me just try not thinking at all for a little bit, you know? And that would kind of like, just saying that phrase in my head would just kind of click me into, don't have to think about this right now. Let me, let me just do the dishes. Let me just have this piece of cake. You know, let me just um, walk outside for a second. Let me go get the mail. You know, let me, let me go organize my closet. It doesn't, I don't have to do anything. I can just, I can just be, I can just act. You know, I don't have to think right now. There's, oh, there was something else I posted one time. It was like, um, I, I choose when to use my brain. You know, like I don't have to use it all the time. Um, Hmm, I'm not remembering the exact phrase that I got on that one. 
but I, that was really impactful to me is like I have my brain my brain is mine and I choose when to use it basically that you're very emotionally serene and 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 you can like turn away from the hardships and just enjoy your morning coffee or whatever like when you're when you're doing something like that you're just doing it you're not going over the same things and making yourself sad you know but but it doesn't even I think maybe they're phrasing it like that but I think what they like about you is that it's just sweet you know and just light and it's not overpowering you're just being you're just being yourself and that's that um you know and it's just it's okay to be surface level sometimes and just chit chat and you know most of life is just a little chit chat and just enjoy yourself yeah <laughs> okay i don't always need to know what's going on you know i'm not gonna push and push and push if it's not in front of me it's not that important let me just focus on what's right in front of me yeah again it's like you don't you don't engage in any of this kind of like subterfuge and um if someone's trying to sneak diss you you let them you know or if somebody's trying to hurt your feelings you pretend you didn't hear you know you know how to play dumb before and people really like this about you they really really do because um you know in abusive situations people will say these little snide comments to get under your skin to ruin your peace and so you know how to avoid that but in a lesser extreme scenario where someone is just Maybe they're feeling a little saucy that morning or, um, you know, maybe they're a little annoyed with you and you can tell that they're a little annoyed with you. You don't add credence to it. You don't, you don't, um, you don't say, well, why are you so mad? Well, you're being so mean, you know, because that just, it doesn't help anything. <laughs> like it literally, it never helps anything. Um, and it just adds fuel to the fire. And even in, even in a non-abusive situation, but especially an abusive situation, of course, but like, even in just like a normal friendship yeah, sometimes maybe you'll be able to tell that your friend is a little annoyed with you. But if you're like, why are you mad at me? Then it becomes a whole thing. Whereas if you just try to be a little nicer for a second um, and just go along your day and maybe again, like, because I, I keep looking at this and this is just remind me of like having breakfast. Today's a new day. Let me start over. You know, it's okay. We don't have to talk about it. Let's just sweep it under the rug. It's okay to sweep some things under the rug. Other things, no. We need to drag them out. We need to bring them into the light and talk about it. But some things don't need to be discussed and we can just forget it. And it's water under the bridge. And you have that water under the bridge. Today's a new day. Let me enjoy my pastry. And I'm not mad at Jessica because she didn't say happy birthday to me yet last year. You know, like, um, you don't really, you're not really doing that. <laughs> yeah again it's like people love how you just hold back and you just maintain your peace I think you're an icon for some people for sure pal for it by maintaining your peace and not letting people drag you into things so this this to me definitely brings to mind like a uh, abusive situation but again this can happen even in non-abusive scenarios where the workplace is always hounding you to pick up the phone and um, you have to just decline to pick up the phone or the workplace wants you to cry and say, oh, I'm so sorry I was late. I, I'll never do it again. But you don't do that. And instead, you're just like, I'm sorry. And then you move on and, and it's no thoughts head empty. You're not feeling bad about it. You don't let people make you feel bad. And that's something people love about you, Pal Four. Queen of Cups and we got King of Cups. Like, you are just an emotionally stable queen. Oh, man. Or king or whatever. Like, I just, you know, I, again, it's not, it's not gendered. Um, it's just you are emotionally peaceful and stable. And you might have had to really develop this, like I said, but you have. Snaps, good job. People love this about you. It's very impressive to me as well. Yeah, you will just calmly swim away from anything that doesn't suit you or is trying to make you feel bad. That's a big thing. It's like, you just can't be made to feel bad or guilty. And you'll move past things. You don't make other people feel guilty either. You do the same for everybody. So you don't let yourself feel bad and you never try to make other people feel bad. Yeah, you definitely have that mentality of let them. 
you know, whatever they do says more about them than it does me. I'm not going to take it to heart. I don't take compliments to heart and I don't take insults to heart. And this is a great mentality. Very good, Pal Floor. This is awesome. Yeah. Nobody can throw you out into the cold because you don't care. And it's like it almost didn't even happen. Um, by not acknowledging these things and by just moving past them, you, you steal their power away. You take away their power. Yeah, and you just keep moving forward as if nothing happened. Um, and so it's as if nothing happened. You you create that world where everything is rainbows and sunshine and you feel at peace. And that's what that's what you have to do in, in life, honestly. You have to, because if you, if, if it's possible for someone to, um, you know, rile you up, they will. If it's possible, it's going to happen. I guarantee you. If If, if something could make you, well, yeah, if some if something could if someone could make you leave your partner, they will. If someone could um make you throw a tantrum, they will. If someone can push you into acting a way that's not like you, it'll happen eventually. So you have to build up a barrier to where no one can make you act out of character. No one can make you act in a way that you don't like or feel something that you don't want to be feeling and that you don't deserve. So it's a great lesson to us all. Thank you very much, Pal Four. Let's pull some music videos. Um I think, again, people also love that you love your own company, you're very at peace, and you've done a lot of inner healing. And and yet you're so giving, too. Again, you're, you're giving constant second chances to people, and like you, you don't let them ruin your peace. So that's, you know, that's a tightrope, right? Like, you can't let someone ruin your peace, and yet you're still able to give some people second chances. So that is a t difficult, you know, thing to walk down, and sometimes you may make mistakes, but I see that if you make a mistake, then you remedy and you move on and you don't hold that against yourself either. Um, you don't you don't beat yourself up for letting someone hurt your feelings once. You just try not to let them hurt your feelings again. So that's what I've got for you. Pile number four. Let me pull out my music videos. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, see, it's like you will go that far. You, you have, um, you know had big emotions to things and been very upset by things but other things you don't let get to you you have a good scale those little things or people trying to hurt your feelings or whatever don't get to you but then when something really bad happens you do feel emotion you're not somebody that doesn't feel emotion it's just that you don't let people sway you and you don't let people get under your skin for no reason you you can feel hurt you can feel um you know passionate about something or sad about something but you don't let people cause you to feel those things it's because you're feeling them like you miss that person it's not because they're trying to get you to miss them does that make sense It's like you will, I'm glad we did this because you will follow your emotions. You will, um, <coughs> you know, impulsively text someone or apologize after a couple years or, um, you know, cry when you get broken up with or, you know, key your ex-boyfriend's car. No, hopefully you're not literally doing that, but you know, something like that to where it's like, oh, maybe like crazy behavior. You will do that when you feel strongly. But you're not going to let somebody, like, hurt your feelings or, um, yeah, I don't know. You really just have, like, this peace of mind. Like, this one, she does leave. He's saying, wait, he's trying to get her to stay, but he, she leaves. And, you know, she gets the revenge on her ex, you know, because he did her wrong. And it's like, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, because you, you really care and you're very invested still. So you have like this calming, forgiving attitude, but you're still very invested. It's not a neutral coldness. Mm -hmm. So funny because the, the music videos are also showing like the other side of this. You're so peaceful because if you do feel something, you go after it. But if you don't, you're not going to be forced. You're never guilted. You know, you follow your real emotions, not the fake ones, not the ones that people say you should feel or they're trying to get you to feel. Mm -hmm. And you feel sad sometimes and you feel sad by things, but not guilted. 
there's a difference. You can feel sad about something, but not guilted. I used to always say like, I can be, I can be persuaded, but I can't be guilted. If you're trying to guilt me, that's a dead end. But I can be persuaded. I can be tempted. You know, like if you're going to, if you want to try to make amends, if I am very amenable to that. But if you're trying to guilt me into making amends, then I'm not amenable to that. And I feel like that is you. And amenable just means like able to be repaired or open to receiving kind of. Um, yeah, Google it if you want. But basically you're open to being closer. You're opening to, you're open to having a conflict, but you're not open to being controlled. Yeah, you're not open to being controlled, but you still follow your impulses and your intuition. So that's great. Thank you very much, Pal4. I'm going to leave these down below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for joining me. Definitely leave a comment.